Hi, I'm Dave from Boy in the Band. Today I want to tell you a secret that'll rattle your preconceptions of the music industry stronger than a 90s boy band member's jawbone. You lean against that wall, you perfectly stubble human. Okay, I'll set the scene. So I was aimlessly clicking through Wikipedia to distract myself from the crushing emptiness of life and found myself on the page of a pop song it had stuck in my head for ages. One of the writers of that song was a name I'd seen before, but I couldn't quite place it. A quick click led me through to his production discography where I thought, oh, that's why I know him. He wrote Baby One More Time, It's Gonna Be Me, I Kissed a Girl, So What, My Life Would Suck Without You, Three, Raise Your Glass, California Girls, Teenage Dream, Hold It Against Me, E.T., Last Friday Night, Part of Me, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, One More Night and Raw. If you didn't notice each of those 16 songs was a number one hit on the Billboard charts. To put it into some perspective, that's three more than Michael Jackson. It's a good thing for MJ that pop is a monarchy, really, otherwise he would have had to hand over his honorific title. Especially since this guy also wrote I Knew You Were Trouble, Beauty and the Beat, Hot and Cold, oops, I nearly listed all 30 of the other songs he made which went into the top 10. As my homegirl Vila put it when I Skyped her to tell her my discovery, he made all the songs. So who is this mysterious music man who's been making mind-bogglingly massive hits? That guy you didn't recognise wasn't a member of a boy band at all. In fact, he just has rugged good looks in addition to being like the biggest pop producer ever, damn you, Max Martin. That's his name, by the way, Max Martin. And he may not have been in a 90s boy band, despite having written the music for like 99% of them, but he was indeed in a band at one point. Can you guess which? Probably not. He was in a funk metal band whose most popular song on their Vivo page has less views than this video. So how the hell is this possible? How can someone who's such an integral part of an industry that's obsessed with glorifying number one hit producing musicians gone so far under the radar for so long? Well, for a start, he doesn't give many interviews. I'm soft serving it. I found an interview in 2009 that he did where he said it was his second interview ever. I've done more interviews than that looking for a job. Didn't get it. In that interview, we had a conversation that went a bit like, so what music do you, I don't have a microphone. Hang on. So Max, what music do you listen to? I've got Janis Joplin in my CD player. Uh, do you think Janis Joplin could have sung Baby One More Time? Oh, well, she was dead when I wrote that song. It makes me glad to know that practically every massive pop star has come into contact with that sense of humor. But even with that, you'd expect more people to be interested in the creator of all of these songs. And to me, that's just something huge about the music industry. No matter how much people want it to be otherwise, it's not all about the music. The look and the personality of these artists are apparently more valuable to people than the music. If it wasn't, then surely there'd be people knocking down his freaking door with well-paid interview opportunities. Not that he needs it, I suppose, since he's currently rolling in about $250 million. How much is that? No, oh, about 150 million pounds. Actually, no, when we're talking about numbers this big, I shouldn't round off. It's 152.244 million pounds. When the numbers after the decimal point can buy you a house, they're worth mentioning. But yeah, I think it's because most people want something they can attach to that music, like a face, an identity, an idea. Even people who say they want true music from real musicians are attaching an idea. Otherwise, they wouldn't care enough to specify who makes the music they listen to. And that's okay, that's just the nature of our perception of music. But I don't know about you, but I think more people deserve to know about someone this freaking inspiring. I mean, making awesome, catchy, freaking worldwide appreciated songs is difficult in itself. But the fact that he managed to do so for like nearly 20 years consistently in an environment as fickle as the music industry is just mind boggling. Max Martin is one of my favorite musicians ever, even before I knew he existed. And I class him as one of my idols, not just because of the insane motivation that would be required to achieve his successes, but because he has a clear passion for all kinds of music from metal to freaking bubblegum pop he doesn't care what genre the song he's making is, he just wants to make something good. And in his own words from his second interview ever, it's music, it's supposed to be fun and inspirational, you have to be inspired. If I did it because it was my job and I only did it to make money, then I don't think I'd still be doing it. And to me, that sounds like the type of number one charting musician that more people should be aware of. Hank, I'll see you on Tuesday.